Shalom, Shalom, it's the brother Kadash. We'll start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rekha, Kadash, double honors to the apostles, peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers in this truth. I'm going to start off with Job chapter 38, verse 33. Knowest thou the ardentness of heaven? Canest thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Meaning the Lord is the one that sets the dominion on the earth. He's the one who sets up everything on the earth. The kings who's ruling it for the time being and everything. Daniel chapter 2 verse 20. It says, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. The wisdom and might is his. His name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. And he changes the times and the seasons. He remove he removeth kings and setteth up kings. So you had Donald Trump. He was a king. He was the president. He removed him out of office and he set up Biden to be the king now. So he remove he removeth kings and setteth up kings. He give wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. Like to the prophets, these are deep and secret things he revealed them to us. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and light dwelleth with him. You know, so let's let this play. That what's interesting about Obama, because it's a very interesting study, is that presidents are controlled in very different ways, right? You know, presidents can be controlled by different factors, uh, power factions within Washington. And, right. You know, I think one of the reasons that uh, Obama was maybe, you know, he had a very close relationship with John Brennan. He was a CIA director. And Obama was very close with John Brennan. And Obama was very, you know, um, you know, I think uh, malleable to the extent that, you know, the CIA, and I've had CIA agents on my show, John Kiriakou, a guy who went to jail for exposing torture was saying that like you know you get into the oval office all of a sudden you're having that presidential daily briefing every day and the intelligence people come in and they go listen man i mean we're there's going to be a terrorist attack on your watch if you don't do x y and z they go we have you know the call they call it like blue book information which is five levels above top secret and they go like hey man a guy in uh a guy in uh, Iran at a cafe said he's blowing everything up next week. And, you know, I mean, it's the same thing as Parlor. You don't know if it's true or not. Right. But now the president's making decision on usually a lot of uncorroborated intelligence that goes into a, a, a presentation for the president where you're just terrified every day. and You don't want a terrorist attack on your watch. Now, so why are they getting all this information? Because a lot of the people in Washington have an interest in perpetual, constant, ongoing warfare. Right. And there's a lot of financial gain to be had from that. So they're sneaking their information into the presentations that are going to the president. And then the president is now behaving and going, fuck, I don't want a bomb going off. We got to do what we got to do. And whatever version of that happens, that is really kind of what is happening. Whereas the presidents are being controlled by forces that are outside of the political sphere, but very much still in it. And they have a lot of power. That's what the deep state is. You know, Trump... I'm going to leave it right there. The name of this is called Presidents Are um, Controlled. You know, but I'm going to name it Presidents Are Controlled by the Lord. And I understand what he's saying. But one thing he didn't consider is who's controlling the whole show. Who's controlling the presidents. Like he said, presidents are controlled. But he didn't consider that presidents are controlled by the Lord. As we just read in Daniel 2, the Lord is the one that bring it down kings and set it, set it up other kings. You know, all the, like, like we read in Job chapter 38, that all dominion on the earth is, you know, controlled by the Lord. He sets the dominion um, on earth. So that's one thing he didn't consider, you know. But this is 1 Samuel chapter 2, just starting at verse 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. You know, so babies being born, life, having new life, that's of the Lord. Man being killed, being brought down to the gate, grave, that's of the Lord. Man being brought down low, that's of the Lord. Man being brought, brought up high on a pedestal, that's all of the Lord. The Lord does that. Verse 7, the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up, which is exactly what I just said. Verse 8, he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dug hill to set them among the princes. So just like Israel right now, we're, we're the lowest on the earth right now because we're under the curses, but he's going to lift us out the dirt and he's going to set us among princes. 
He, he has the power to do that. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. You see, we're going to inherit the throne of glory because we're joint heirs with um, Yahweh Shai. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 1. And matter of fact, you read about the Lord controlling the kings, just like remember the story um, in Exodus when Moses leading the Israel's, Israelites out of Egypt. The Pharaoh, the Lord was hardening the Pharaoh's heart so he wouldn't let the Israelites go. So the Lord was controlling Pharaoh's heart, and he was a he was a king, you know, he's a Pharaoh at that time. It says to inherit the throne of glory, it says, for the pillars of earth are, are the Lord's. Anything on earth that's done is done by the Lord. The Lord controls everything. Then did not say in um Amos chapter three that the Lord um it, can evil be done in the city and the Lord has not done it. Pretty much showing you that the Lord controls evil and good. He controls the left hand side and the right hand side. It says, for the pillars of earth for the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He would keep the feet of the saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. And that's prophecy. That's what's going to happen. That's a uh, prophecy. You know, the saints, we're going we gonna to get the kingdom and the wicked, which Esau, Edom, Malachi chapter 1, you know, they're the border of the wickedness, meaning that they're the most wicked on earth. They're going to be silent in darkness. It says, for by shrink shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he should give strength unto his king. You know, he's going to set back up King David over us. But over King David, you got Yahweh Shai, which is the king of kings. Um, the Lord of Lords referring to Revelation chapter one. And they're referring to Revelation chapter 2, verse 26, when it says the adversaries of the Lord should be broken into pieces. The Lord going to also give us the power to break these other nations into pieces. So he's going to take us from the spot where we're at right now, pretty much, you know, being dependable on the government, not having anything of our own, have to go to Esau for any and everything. He's going to take us from that position. He's going to set us up to be kings and priests on this earth. It says he should give strength into his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And who is this anointed? Well, referring to Revelation chapter 7, the 144,000 elect is his anointed. Matter of fact, I want to jump to Revelation to pull that scripture I was talking about. Here, let me see. Well, in Revelations 1, it says he's the Alpha. Revelations chapter 1, verse 8, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, saint the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You know, um, and then in Revelations chapter 2, here, let me see. Yeah, Revelation chapter 2, starting at verse um, 26, it says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as a vessel of powder shall they be broken to shivers. Same thing as being broken into pieces. Even as I receive of my father. So just like he received that power from the father, Yahweh, that's on the throne, um, those who follow him, which is the elect which uh, of Israel, the 144,000 elect, the one third of Israel, he's going to also give us that same power. So it shows you that the way that he's heir to all things, we're going to be joint heirs with him, you know, in Hebrews chapter one, I'll pull that too. I'm trying to make this edifying. Um, uh, verse two. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, who he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So he appointed his son heir of all things. And just like in Revelation 2 and 26, he said he's going to give us that same power that he had received of his father. So, you know, um, salvation to the elect, I'm going to leave it there. And the Lord controls what happens on the earth, you know, so we just got to roll with it. And prophecy going to be uh, fulfilled regardless. Matter of fact, let me pull that real quick too. Because I ain't 
pulled that scripture in a long time and it just popped into my head. Romans chapter 3, um, verse 3, it says, no, I'll start at verse 1. What advantage then has a Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that into them were committed the oracles of God. So unto us, it was the breakdowns, the understanding of this Bible, these things was given to us. You know, that's why the whole world's watching us right now. The Israelites waking up. Verse three, for what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and might have overcome when thou art judged. And, you know, we just keep it to these scriptures. So we're justifying in these sayings because the Lord gave us the oracles of God. He gave it to us, you know, the Israelites. So we break things down. We don't go off our own words. We break things down by the scriptures. That's why you see every video we make, we put the scriptures in there to back it up. We filter things that's going on in the world through the scriptures today. So with that, I'm going to say salvation to the elect. Shalom.